Cheap and Best RTX Gaming PC 2023. A lot of people have been commenting in my videos asking, Vimal bhai, when are you bringing back the budget PC tech series on the channel? And boys, we are back with a brand new gaming PC build in this video. And you might have seen the concept now. Today, we will be building the most affordable RTX gaming PC build. Now, thing is, a lot of people might be excited to build their first gaming PC in 2023, yeah. right? Now, make sure to build a PC that can actually play games with ray tracing and DLSS, guys. Because the kind of games that are coming yeah. out in 2023 are like next next level guys you have so many interesting games actually one of my sister's favorite is hogwarts legacy yes. she's been like really eagerly waiting yeah. for that and it has like breathtaking graphics when ray tracing is enabled so if you want to experience all this stuff now make sure to watch this video till the end it's gonna be like very helpful to you all now keeping that aside so that is the whole concept what i'll be doing is we'll be building a gaming pc which will offer you like maximum performance at lowest price we'll try to keep the rgb as low as possible <laughs> huh? he'll say it like this but by the end when you watch the complete PC, you know, you'll find full RGB. Are, I mean, what's the benefit of making like black and white, boring looking PC? Okay, okay, I'll take this like a feedback. I'll try to minimize the price, keep RGB down and offer maximum sort of performance. Now, actually, me and my sister actually chose like the best suitable combination of parts over here. It was actually quite tough, guys, because we had tight budget. Na? Yeah. So it was like very difficult choosing part. I wanted to go with like brand new gen components because 2023 edition, na? but our budget was not allowing for that. So, you know, I had to do some cost cuttings here and there. So the biggest question for this gaming PC build is which GPU are we going for? Now, it's a budget sort of build, so obviously we can't go for like 40 series GPUs from NVIDIA, yeah. right? So we are going with an GeForce RTX 30 series GPUs. Now, you people know, right, GeForce RTX 30 series are based on Ampere architecture, second gen ray tracing card, yet offer like really good gaming performance <laughs> even in 2023. I actually made a video two or three days ago, yeah. like Retro Tech, revisiting like 30 series GPUs in 2023. And let me tell you, they still rock, guys, because for the price point, now nah, you're getting value for money performance yeah. and today in the house we have a special card from galax this is their geforce rtx 3060 ti that to the sg edition sg stands for like serious gaming and there you go this is the card we'll be using today for our build you can easily play almost all triple a titles at 1440p resolution and 1080p though with the ray tracing dlss enable reflex enable all of these are possible now you people know now what ray tracing and dlss stands for when you enable ray tracing you get like realistic lighting realistic shadows in games such that it makes the gameplay feel more lifelike and realistic changes the whole perspective of playing these games and Sheetal why don't you also talk about like DLSS what can that do yeah guys he made so many videos on RTX and DLSS that even if you ask me in sleep I can tell you what these are <laughs> so DLSS basically stands for deep learning super sampling and this feature greatly boosts frame rates without compromising on image quality and not only that in certain scenarios it also helps you reach or like lost image information keep that in mind and lastly if you talk about like nvidia reflex well this is also something you know that you use to measure and optimize your overall system latency and helps you improve the responsiveness of your pc so we'll be putting all of these technologies to a test in this video and i'll show you how much big of a difference can these technologies from nvidia make so it's gonna be super fun it's gonna be like a banger video yeah. guys and before we get started why don't we like quickly yes. show them all the parts that we chose for the pc build yeah first of all let's get started with the cpu now initially i wanted to use like all new next gen uh, components which are like recently <laughs> launched but we had tight budget now yeah. so i had to do cost cuttings we are going with amd's ryzen 5 5600x cpu guys it's like a value for money cpu i'd say six cores 12 threads 4.6 gigahertz max turbo boost perfect for this sort of build Talking about the motherboard, now I would suggest you to go for something like a B450 or B550 would be like good guys. Even if you use this PC for the next three years also, that will be like fine. But I don't have like a B550 right now. As an alternative, I'm going with like an X570 from Asus. This is the tough gaming edition. This is also a pretty good motherboard, but slightly a bit expensive. You go for like B550 guys, uh, you'll save a lot of money and that'll get your job done. Now coming to the RAM, I am using RAM from T4. This is also their Delta RGB RAM. Uh, you're getting like 8 into 2, 16 GB RAM, DDR4 RAM, clocked at 3200 megahertz, only around like 6100 rupees and is like really good at this price point. And GPU, I've already told you 3060 Ti from yeah. Galax SG edition. 
and uh, storage now storage part though, i'll leave it up to you guys because yeah. everybody has like different requirements go for like a simple 240 gb uh, sata ssd that will cost you only around like 2000 rupees and is like enough for like starters and, and finally the case don't waste any uh, money on rgb if you don't have go for like a simple case around 2500 or 3000 plenty of brands are available deep cool cooler masters just go for anything depending on your requirement and lastly power supply for this sort of configuration a 650 watt power supply would be like more than enough today we are using a corsair 650 watt power supply it's a semi modular power supply with 80 plus bronze rating this is also like very affordable around like 4000 or 5000 rupees so that's it these are like the components we are using for the video let's get started Our build is all done guys and here's how it looks like pretty good right all black concept over here with a touch of rgb here and there and look at that cable management as well very neatly organized i think i deserve a pat for that on the back so what i'll do is i'll quickly power it on and show you how this system looks like you guys just sit back relax and hope you enjoy this beautiful cinematic shots Holy moly now that is a beautiful looking build on a budget minimal on the outside jakas on the inside look at those sweet looking rgb components i don't know why man but every time i build like a brand new gaming pc i get this asmr sort of feels you know i can just keep on staring at these pcs for a long long time such a satisfactory experience what do you people think share your thoughts in the comment section down below All right boys about time we jump into the benchmarks and see what this system can do. We have a Ryzen 5 5600X paired with Galaxy G4 RTX 3060 Ti SG edition with 8 gigs of VRAM coupled with 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM at 3200 megahertz. So there is nothing less you can expect over here. As I have told you this sort of configuration can easily handle 1440p gaming and yes you can even play games with ray tracing enabled. To show you a demo of that today we will be playing Spider-Man Miles Morales. Now I don't know how many of you people have noticed how big of a difference ray tracing can make in this game so i am going to show you like an in-depth side by side comparison with ray tracing on and off i'm telling you right you people will be like awestruck when you see the difference so in this first test both ray tracing and dlss are off so we can actually see the raw potential of the hardware by the way we are playing this game at 1080p resolution and the graphics are set to high Okay now that is pretty awesome as you can see we were getting an average of around like 100 to 105 fps at these sort of settings Galaxy SG edition 3060 Ti is a triple fan card and offers like nearly 3070 level of performance game runs like butter guys muska performance is what i can say but the real question is how does this system handle ray tracing Let's quickly enable it in the settings everything set to on and very high and keep in mind DLSS is off right now so now let's check out the results Oh wow you might have not expected that right Look at this even with ray tracing set to very high we were easily getting around like 70 75 fps on an average i've told you right g4 rtx 3060 tier really packs a punch 
See, ray tracing is the real deal. It produces realistic lighting effects by simulating the actual behavior of the light. In Spider-Man Miles Morales, we get to see two different types of ray tracing options. You get ray trace reflections and ray trace shadows. First, let's talk about the reflections. When you enable this, you get accurate, dynamic and realistic sort of reflections, mostly notable on mirror-like surfaces, glass windows or chrome-like areas. Ray tracing adds like a whole new dimension to the game and makes it feel more lifelike playing, resulting in an artifact free and produces accurate sort of reflections the way they should be on shiny or reflective sort of glossy surfaces. Just have a look at these examples over here so you'll get like a better understanding what exactly happens when ray tracing is on versus RTX off. The first clip here is with ray trace reflection set to off. Have a look at those reflections on the glass surface. Whatever that is being reflected on the surface is like inaccurate and unidentifiable. That means there is detail missing, environmental detail is also not there and basically you can't make out what that is. But see what happens when you turn ray tracing on. Holy moly, you guys see that? Now that is what I'm talking about. That is the kind of difference ray tracing can do. There's almost like a night and day difference over here. Turning RTX on fixes all those problems and produces artifact free and proper reflections as they should occur on any shiny surfaces. So this makes the overall game feel very realistic and adds a whole new level of depth to the gameplay. Let me just put these scenes side by side and show you the difference. Ah, uh, here we go. Now you can clearly see the difference, right? Like what is exactly happening when you turn RTX on and when it's off. Let's have a look at some more examples in different scenarios. As usual in this first clip RTX is off, just observe the reflections on the windows behind Spider-Man. Looks inaccurate and has a lot of artifacts, right? But when you switch on RTX, boom, massive difference that is immediately noticeable. Just look at those building reflections over here. Pretty awesome, right? I have to say ray tracing like greatly enhances the graphics. Here's one more demo for you. Just look at those glass panels on the roof. Looks plain, right? There are not even any reflections on those tinted panels on the right side. But now check this out. Oh boy, feels very realistic. Now come on, you just can't sit there without appreciating how good the game looks like with ray tracing enabled. So I hope you all got like a clear idea how much difference can ray trace reflections bring when you turn them on in the game. Moving on, let me also show you how ray trace shadows look like. When RTX is off, you'll observe that either sunlight or any sort of light source simply illuminate a particular object or maybe like a character in the game. And even look at those shadows in this scene. They look quite harsh, right? But when RTX is enabled, the illumination feels more natural as the light is bounced off the objects and naturally blends in the environment. Even look at those shadows on the floor now. They look a lot more natural and lifelike. See, once you start playing games with ray tracing and get used to these sort of ultra realistic graphics, there is no going back. Alright, as we saw just now, ray tracing definitely improves overall gaming experience, but at the cost of your performance. And that is where DLSS comes into play. NVIDIA's DLSS stands for Deep Learning Super Sampling. It's a kind of machine learning AI neural network that significantly boosts the frame rates depending on the current resolution you're playing the game at, at the same time rendering sharp images without actually losing any image quality. Spider-Man Miles Morales offers like four different DLSS options to choose from. You get balanced mode, quality, performance, ultra performance is also there and nvidia recommends using quality mode for 1080p and performance for 1440p resolution this will help you get like a consistent and smooth gaming experience even when ray tracing is enabled previously when dlss was off we were getting somewhere around like 65 70 fps right but now with DLSS enabled, as you can see, we were getting around like 80 to 85 FPS on an average. That's a pretty good improvement, right? It's more prominent at higher resolutions like 1440p or above. 
and not to miss out the game also has nvidia reflex support as well for this to work you'll obviously need to have like a minimum of geforce rtx 30 series gpu nvidia reflex is a low latency technology that measures analyzes and reduces your overall system latency and thus increases your pc responsiveness main thing is now when you enable this feature it will greatly reduce the latency from your gpu so whenever you're playing a game and you're giving like input commands say from your mouse spider-man will now react more quickly in the game and this is more noticeable especially during fight scenes well that is pretty much it guys i hope you all got to know like how big of a difference nvidia's technologies can do with their geforce rtx 30 series gpus time to wrap it up i guess let me just drop the price list of the components just have a look at them so we'll get to know about the budget of the gaming pc we built in this video so that's it i hope you all enjoyed watching the video and got to learn a lot make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel for more such awesome and interesting videos and i'll see you all in my next one